So ASTAP has a, a really good mode for um, analyzing images and giving you information about them. So this is an image that I took in the summer and it was after the uh, asteroid Vesta, which is one of the, the brightest asteroids, because uh, it was closest to us and it was quite a nice bright thing. Now, as you can see with this image, it's just two big stars and then a, a bunch of little stars. So how do you know which one is, is Vesta? So uh, if you go into the little tools option, uh, and then you've got asteroid and comet annotation and then what it does is that it goes away has a look at the image and it gives you some feedback on all the different images that are in there and lo and behold the big bright one there is number four Vesta so isn't that fantastic what the software also will do is it will do some uh, analysis on every star that's in there and so what it can do is it can tell you this the, the sort of the magnitude if you like of every single star that's in an image so it takes a couple of seconds and then what it does is that next to each star it will give you a value so we'll just let that uh, run and then that's really good if you want to know for example how sensitive your equipment is if you want to know how bright an object is that you're looking at and so on so that star there, magnitude 14.6. This star here, magnitude 12.3. Uh, and it's just really, really interesting. And it just shows you the sort of limits of, the, of that single frame. So that single frame that I took whenever it was, uh, I'm sort of limited to about magnitude 17, if you have a look at that one as well. So that is really, really uh, useful um, stuff. Brilliant, brilliant software. So I'm going to show you how we can use uh, ASTAP for comets and asteroids. So what's the difference between comets and asteroids and the other stuff that we do, the, the deep sky stuff? Well, the one of the problems you have is that comets and asteroids are moving fast against the night sky. They're not basically static if they're, if they're close to the Earth. Um, so therefore, the traditional sort of taking a bunch of images over three hours and stacking them up won't work because these objects are, are moving. Um, the second problem that you have is that uh, comets can be sometimes a point or an asteroid can be a point or it can be a disc or it can be a, a, a you know the traditional comet shape with a tail and you know the stacking software is made for astronomical you know deep sky objects and it's not really made for uh, these type of things so ASTAP has really nice ways of handling uh, comets and asteroids so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to look at the images that we've got and here's some um, PNG files of images that I took uh, and as you can see um, uh, you know there's our comet in the middle now the problem you have if I very crudely just take you through these images is that that comet is moving so therefore if you put that in your normal sort of astronomy software it will just smudge because although the stars are all in the same place that that comet's moving and it just wouldn't know what to do when it was stacking the second thing is as you can see the images are sort of moving ever so slightly um from one to the other just in, in the general framing and the reason for that is because um i was using an altaz mount which has a little bit of a rotation thing going on um also you can see there's a bit of smudging as well that's because i had some vibrations going on as well so you know we're not dealing with with perfect frames here. so how what 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 is it that we're trying to achieve Achieve. well the first thing we're trying to do is we want to get like a master image of this so the way that you do that is that you take all your frames and then you put it into the lights options so I'll just grab that and grab that in we go so that's great and then the second thing you need to do is to do the alignment so instead of using a star alignment plate solving that's not what we want we want to do manual alignment so you click manual alignment and then you pick what it is you want to align on so I want to align on on the, the comet. If you pick a star, that's how you do things like star trail. So you'd have a star in the middle and then all the nice funky things around it. So then what we do is we come back to here and you'll see straight away that these are all red. So what we need to do is to open each of the images, which you can see there as it just opens, zoom in and then just put your cursor and click on the position of the comet. And as you can see, it's now said, yep, yeah, that's great. And then what we do we do that for each of the images so as you can see they're all green now because they're all really happy about what we've done and then you just click on the stack option and then what it does is it goes through to those um uh, those 15 frames or whatever i did uh, 14 frames sorry and then it will go through and do um convert them into fits files and then it will do like a sort of uh, a master stack if you like of that of that image so that took just over a minute and then we have our final image here so as you can see 
all the stars have been sort of smudged because they're, they're moving against the background and then we have our comet there so we just need to do a little bit of playing with the stretching functions uh, get rid of some of the aggression on them because it's a little bit uh, aggressive and then we can sort of see um, see our our comet there we go so that's how you sort of get um, a master image of the of the comet as well uh, which is really quite cool What you can also do, which isn't an ass tap thing, but you can create a little cool little movie out of whatever you've been doing. So you can take all of the frames that you have got and you can do a, um, a time lapse in PIP, uh, which is usually used for planets. But in this case, we're going to use it for um, creating like a little mini movie. So I've sorted them all in order. Uh, it straight away recognizes its join mode, so we're going to create a little mini movie out of it. So you can go these through the input options, which are fine. Processing options, which are absolutely fine. Um, quality options don't matter. Animation, so you want to set your, your frames per second. So in something like this, let's say we want to do two frames per second, because if you do it too fast, you know, there's only 14 frames in this. So you want to have a look at that as well. So then you click the do processing. Start processing. This won't take any time at all. Just quickly flick through them all, uh, and then it produces a master master video. And then what you can also do is you can crop this video. So when it's doing its outputs, you can actually crop it so that you could say, "Look, I want to have just the center of the image." Um, and I don't know why it's put it there, but then there you go. There's our little sort of comet going across the sky, which I think is really really cool because this was over the space of an hour, and it just shows you how. Um, it just shows you how quickly that these comets are moving against, uh, you know, moving through the solar system, zipping away. Uh, this P uh, 67P is nearly at um, closest approach to the sun. I think it's got a couple of weeks left on it. So um, this was a really nice object to do. But um, yeah, comets. So one of the cool things that ASTAP can do is that it can uh, measure the magnitude of objects, so comets, deep space objects, you name it. And one of the really um, uh, quick, cool ways of doing this is it's so quick as well. So you open one of your images, this is one of the comet ones, you click on solve, takes 0.4 seconds, that's amazing. And then what you do, you zoom in, get a nice sort of uh, overview of the image, right click your mouse button and draw a little square over it and then you say measure total magnitude and there you go it's given us a magnitude of 11.6 uh, i know for a fact that this comet was around um 10 and a half uh but given the fact it was a, a very limited imaging session i was only taking a couple of minutes at a time i'm really um impressed about how how powerful that is amazing <laughs>